Okay, uh, welcome back. Got a good breather. All right, let's continue where we left off. <clears throat> so in the last class, uh, last session, we covered the origins of the church and how church is uh, Jesus's idea, God's idea. It belongs to him and uh, he is the head and, we are, and the church is his body. And because he is eternal, the church is also eternal because we are part of his body, right? Um, we started looking at the spiritual dimension of the church, which is uh, the church is a Christ's body. We'll uh, continue from there on. Okay. Um, the section says the church is Christ's instrument to execute his purposes. Church is Christ's instrument to execute uh, his purposes here. Okay. Um, so the notes it says the body executes what the head commands isn't it so you know push this hit someone <laughs> okay <laughs> so the body executes what the head uh, commands isn't it so both here in the present age and in the millennium so when you look at daniel chapter 7 verse 18 it says forever and ever and ever okay so it's pointing towards millennium so you can look at that verse a little later uh, but here's the thing the the section says the church is his instrument to execute his purposes okay so remember we are his instrument now i just want to play us something um which kind of uh will give you an, a, a nice idea of what i'm talking about so let's see um i hope you can all hear this okay oh it would have been nice for you all to see it but it's okay <laughs> i'll share the link this is on youtube okay but um, so he, he's giving a demonstration of something. So. Hey, hey, James, back on the sound uh, board guy. Um, is, is this guitar? Is this guitar on? Turn this guitar. What I want to do. I want this guitar to be very loud in the house and i want my voice uh, you don't want the guitar real loud in that monitor of course because you'll get some feedback but i want my voice very loud in this monitor okay guitar loud in the house voice loud in the monitor hallelujah oh sorry move too close hallelujah holy lord Holy Lord, I see that guitar is responding to the sound of my voice. Holy, 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 holy. Okay, very quickly, can you all hear how the guitar is responding to the sound of his voice? Yeah, okay, let's continue. Holy. See what it's doing, is it's hearing the sound of my voice and it's saying, I agree. And the Lord is speaking to a generation and he's waiting for us to hear this sound of his voice and become instruments of worship. Did you know what I was talking about last night or this morning? Well, I was talking about the enemy, Satan himself. He didn't have to lead worship with a guitar. He was a guitar. And then we got his place. And now we become instruments of worship unto a holy God. Because we hear the sound of his voice come into agreement with it. Holy, 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 worthy. Worthy, worthy. Now, thank okay, so yeah, we can. <laughs> that that whole teaching is amazing. I'll share that link with us when we can, when I can. But the point I wanted to make was that this, it's here. It says that we are God's instrument, right, to execute His purpose. Right? Just like what was happening as an example there, as a demonstration, is that if we have the ear to hear the things of heaven, what he is saying, 
us like the guitar will come in agreement and say amen and release that sound of heaven here on earth isn't it like you see how praise and worship is still linked with the local church <laughs> and when we are called as you know as god's instrument right and so you know of everything what god could have done he is all powerful almighty all knowing uh, everlasting um he could have used the angels or any creation for that matter isn't it to accomplish his purpose but he chooses to co-partner with us like one of the points that we learned in healing and deliverance class is that he's he he's just looking for that opportunity to join hands with us to partner with us um and to establish his will here on earth um uh, you know as just like the word says um uh, Joel's prophesy says in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh flesh he's looking for a human being right to accomplish what he wants to do right he's looking for someone who will say amen and come in agreement with him okay so that is uh, another spiritual dimension to the fact uh, that you know we are called as the local church is that we are called to execute his purposes as it says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 23 uh we are called to be the complete represent representation or representation of Jesus okay of of Jesus Christ um Ephesians 123 I'll read the message bible version in your it's in your notes uh it says the church you see is not peripheral to the world the world is peripheral to the church now what is the meaning of peripheral uh, we It's a peripheral vision. What does that mean? I'm looking at you, but with my peripheral vision, I can see you. That's called the peripheral vision, like towards the thing, isn't it? So that's what it is. Is um, so here is saying, see, uh, the wor- uh, the church is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the you know to the church. That means our eyes is fixed on church. not on the world but like peter my eyes is not fixed on the waves on the storm it's fixed on you know on jesus i'm sorry i'm pointing my finger at you you too because <laughs> you know so it says uh, the church you see is not peripheral to the world the world is peripheral to the church and the church is christ's body in which he speaks look at that that's amazing guys okay the church is christ's body he's not just saying that in which he speaks and acts right if he wanted to he can just show up to the world and saying stop having these debates guys you see who the real god is if he wanted to he can do that isn't it but he wants to co-partner with us and through the church his body he wants to speak that means he wants the church to be his voice and if he's saying if he wants to act that means he wants the church to be his hands in his feet like do what i want you to do go where i want you to go are you with me right and by which he fills everything with his presence um let's read the amplified classic edition as well ephesians 123 it says uh, which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all for in that body lives the full measure of him <laughs> uh, who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself it's a very good version to say wow <laughs> okay <laughs> right um yeah so the church is the complete representation or the representation of jesus christ okay um and then again it goes on to say another spiritual dimension to it is that every believer is a member of christ's body as it says in first corinthians 12:27 uh, now you are the body of christ and members individually so individually and as a collective we are the body of christ okay um now we've looked at the spiritual dimensions so let's look at some of the natural dimensions of the church um natural dimensions it simply means the tangibles okay anything that is natural means okay anything that you can see touch feel is what we would call it as natural right everything that is of the other kingdom we call it as supernatural 
which is natural in that kingdom okay but uh, the natural dimensions of the church that means the tangibles the things that you can see and hear and feel okay so well, let's just look at those dimensions of the church um, so first Timothy chapter 3 was 14 and 15 Paul is writing to Timothy who is the overseer of the church in Ephesus right Timothy is overseeing he's one of the leaders uh, at this time uh, before he becomes an elder and a pastor in other words um, the Paul Paul is writing to Timothy in first Timothy chapter 3 was 14 and 15 um, these things I write to you that I hope to come to you shortly uh, now this chapter you know if if you go to any church website if you go to their employment page uh, if they have an employment page or if they are hiring a pastor and whatnot um, let's just say for example um, so and so church is looking for an associate pastor uh, the requirements are he should have a heart according to first Timothy chapter 3 so all of this will be mentioned okay so it's like yeah guys okay so, uh, He's saying in verse 14, these things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I'm delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Now, eventually, we're going to look and focus on all those words separately. But... Um, you see the choice of words that Apostle Paul is choosing uh, to say to refer to the house of God, uh, church is the house of God, okay, and hence the publication. Okay, the name is titled House of God, uh, Household of God, Household of Faith. Um, is all used as synonyms. It's you know as alternative to the local church, basically. So when you say the local church, I'm saying it's the house of God. I'm saying it's the household of God, uh, right? It's uh, house of God means that means that's where God kind of dwells. Yes, yes, no, maybe, okay. <laughs> okay, so look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, and Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. They're all in the notes. Um, let's just give a quick glance at it. Ephesians 2, 19, it says, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. Okay, I've said this many times. Anytime you see the word therefore, you need to ask yourself, why is it therefore? Okay, that means you have to go and read chapter 2 from verse 1 to 18. Okay, <laughs> we're not going to do that, but we'll... Uh, con so now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. In other words, the local church. In other words, the house of God. Okay, in Galatians 6.10, it says, Once again, therefore... Yeah, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are the uh, are of the household of faith. Wow. Okay, there's so many titles to the house of God, right? To the local church, house, a household of faith. Okay. Um, so the notes says the term house or household refers to a family. Okay. It simply refers to a family. Now, we'll discuss about this in the second section where we talk about uh, God's blueprint in detail and whatnot. Okay. So, uh, let me just ask this question uh, Is it important for us to be part of a local church? Yes. What would be some of the reasons why some individuals are not part of the local church? What would be some of the reasons why a few individuals who claim to be Christians, borderline Christians, Christians, borderline Christians, um, agnostics, atheists, uh, atheists, forget it. But what would be some of the reasons why a few individuals choose not to be part of the local church? They don't like rules and regulations, so they don't like to come under the supervision, or in other words, they don't like to come under the leadership, or uh, they don't like to come under the authority. All the words I'm thinking, okay, supervision, leadership, they don't like to submit, submission, all of <laughs> under that, no? 
uh, denominations rule. Okay, clean shave, white and white. Okay. <laughs> the doctrine, the doctrine might not be right for them. Okay, of a local church. Okay. What do you guys think? Sorry, lazy. The nail on the head. Like who's going to get a brush? One day leave, I get. Six days I work, for 18 hours I work. <laughs> you know? Well, some of them go to the evening set, but they go, no. <laughs> my point is, my question is, okay, why do they don't want to be part of a local church? It challenges their lifestyle. Simply, they, they want to be comfortable, isn't it? They don't have a love for Jesus. Some people go for work on Sunday. Some people go for work on Sunday, okay. Uh, Nina says the significance or the importance of uh, is lost of being part of his body. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, some of them, let's say, in experience, some of them might be offended or hurt by the church. Yeah. Like, okay, because I don't like the way that this church treated me, so I'm not going to believe in Christianity. Is a possibility? That is the reason why some some of them would not want to be part of a local church. It's like uh, hypocrites, or hypocrites, you know, Christians. Uh, Christians are, was, are supposed to be known for their unconditional love and extravagant love, but uh, no, they are not. <laughs> They're a bunch of judgmental people. Uh, universally, Christians are not known for that, isn't it? We should be. If we are, if, uh, if we are the exact representation of how Jesus is uh, called us to be, the whole world be evangelized. Isn't it? Some of our church names are bigger than uh, and longer than you know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, just not go there. Okay, the church of so da, 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 some more names to the church, and full India will be evangelized. You know. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, what are some of the reasons that can you think of that? Everything that you've said. Yeah. Okay. Fear. Yeah. Okay. Fear they'll judge me because of how I look and what I do, etc. Okay, all right. Let's talk about. Sorry, uh, Nikhil. Right. Right. So some local uh, people used to think like this. Okay. If he's uh, like, uh, uh, he's doing this, and he's teaching us, mm. if he's not able to uh, apply these things, right? And what he will teach us, what he will, uh, so. So not leading by example. In uh, other words, okay, the leader of the church is not leading by example. Okay, so you, you're you're not uh, walking the talk. In other words, as I say, right? You're just talking. Practice what you practice what you preach. There used to be an old uh, Sunday school song. I'm not sure if you know this, but your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Have you heard of it? It's my your walk not in darkness. Okay, <laughs> but it's, it's a lovely song. See, I, I I sang this in like in my Sunday school, and I still remember it. Your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Um and so one of I forget this person, but uh, the name of this person because very complicated name. He said, "The greatest form uh, of influence is example. It's not one of the form of uh, uh, influence. It is the only form of influence. Uh, the greatest form of influence is example. Um, so you you say you want to influence as leaders, as church, we want to influence people, as as a father." uh you know as a as a son daughter whatever um or let's just say as, as a parent for example if when i when i read that quote that's my first thought went to you know that's the thing is like I, the only the greatest form of ex influence is example and so uh it's so dangerous living with my son because <laughs> i will do a 99 good things i will do one wrong thing and he'll happen to notice only that, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, is this is this crazy, isn't it? So, um, 
we are called to represent Jesus as a local church uh, and whatnot. So uh, the notes, it says, why should you be part of a local church? Um, a couple of points. I just don't want to go through the whole thing. It says it, it is within the local church that you, you and I live out of membership in Christ's spiritual body, which is the church. Right? It is in the church that we grow spiritually in our maturity uh, and whatnot. So that way you look at it is very important to be part of a local church, like to be part of a community where you are strengthened and equipped and empowered, where God's word is taught uh, without compromise, isn't it? Um, right. So it's important that way to be part of a local church. Um, and you, I mean, your motivations and in, your intentions can be questions, will be questioned. Are you going to be part of a local church simply because you want uh, a space in the burial ground when you pass away, or you can have access to the church when you get married? Uh, you know, sometimes that's exactly what happens. It, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, there can be certain benefits of being part of the local church. Now, are you part of a local church for the benefits you get from them? Or you are just part of the local church because you love Jesus and because you are growing spiritually, right? So that's where we go. We grow spiritually uh, and uh, in our maturity, example, right? And so when we say that we are the body of Christ, <laughs> parts of our body are not flying around, floating somewhere. You know, it's like the head is somewhere, the hand is somewhere, the leg is somewhere. Uh, it's it's a very weird image, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not a very pleasant. So. But we all function together. He is the head. He speaks. We obey. And that's why it's very important for us to come together. And I think God made that point very clear when he said that it is not good for man to be alone. Right? In his intention. So, and from the beginning, and I've said this so many times, from Genesis to Revelation, one of the things that he keeps saying, repeating uh, book after book after book, is that I will be your God and you will be my individual you will be my people. You will be my people. You will be my people. And the last chapter, why does last chapter of the Bible in Revelation 22, it finishes with the city, God talking about a city. It's a collective thing, isn't it? Right? And uh, it, even about when you talk about the life of Jonah, the only thing we think about is uh, the whale, uh, fish, or whatever, and three days that he was in the belly. But the last verse of that chapter says, should I not have compassion on this great city? And city is made of what? All of you are listening and awake. OK, so <laughs> yes, it is made of people. Exactly. Um, so his heart is always for the people. And, uh, in, you know, and that's why it's important for us, us as a church to come together in unity and understand all this truth about the beauty of the church and the wonder of the church and be his instrument. Are you with me? Yeah, okay, so now uh, let's move on to the next chapter. Um, I'm skipping a lot of things because yeah, it's all, go through it when you can. Um, the second chapter talks about the purpose of the local church, its mission, message, and methods. Um, in chapter one, we looked at the origin and its spiritual and the natural dimensions of it. Um, so here in this chapter, we look at the purpose of the local church. Um, it has three purposes, three simple basic purposes. Now remember, again, when we started off the session, I did not say that I'm going to give you a bunch of steps. Uh, this course is not about giving you a bunch of methods, 10 methods or techniques or skills, but it's about the heart of God, what the Bible has to say about it, isn't it? So. Uh, according to the word of God, the purpose of the local church, one is its mission. So what is its mission? I look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. It says, and Jesus came and spoke to them and saying, all authority has been given to me. You see from Matthew 16 to Matthew 28, how the language changes now when it comes to authority, right? Has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So now it says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe, another translation would say obey, teaching them to obey all things that I have commanded you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
Now, all he is saying is now, okay, Jesus has won the victory. He's saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Okay, and now then he says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Um, and the point, the key point here is, he says, go and make disciples. Basically, he's saying, go preach and teach. But he's not saying how to preach or how to teach. He's not giving them how he's not giving them any methods or techniques. He just says, go preach and teach. Are you with me? And he tends to do this, you know, a, a lot across the Bible. When you read even Joshua chapter one, Joshua chapter one between between verse six and verse nine. Okay, you can read it later. Joshua chapter one, verse six and verse nine. He's telling Joshua, "Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed." He's saying, uh, "But instead, be encouraged." Uh, sorry, never. I'll never leave an office like you. So he says, "Be encouraged. Uh, you know, don't be dismayed. Uh, be strong. Be encouraged. Be very strong. Be uh, be encouraged." So between verse six and verse nine, he's saying that at least three times. You're saying don't be discouraged or or you're saying be encouraged and be strong be encouraged be strong be very encouraged be very strong not once does he say how to be strong and how to be encouraged but in verse 8 between verse 7 and verse 9 he lives uh, he gives a small hint don't let the word don't let my word depart your heart meditate on the word you know he's kind of giving you a clue Okay, so similarly here, he's saying, uh, go and make baptize them, uh, you know, and uh, decide, make disciples of all the nations and whatnot. He doesn't ex exactly give the exact methods. Okay, start one, step one, um, et cetera, et cetera. This is how you, you are to preach and teach and whatnot. So the mission of the local church is very simple. What is it? We just looked at it, the Great Commission. Yeah, go make disciples. Yeah, baptize them, preach the gospel, teach the gospel. That's the mission. So, and how is that connected with the local church? Is now the Great Commission help establish the local churches, and the local church helps in accomplishing the Great Commission. You see how that goes hand in hand, right? The Great Commission helps establishing the local church, and the local church. Helps accomplish. It's it's like a cycle. Is that clear? Right. So that is the mission, uh, you know, uh, and the purpose when it comes to the local church. And so, and when Jesus says preach and teach um, or make disciples, so that means what is the message? What should be the message? The gospel. It's as simple as that, right? The gospel is the message. Of the church okay so we are to preach the gospel of our lord jesus christ um right the work that he completed on the cross uh the healing the salvation the deliverance that he's made available to all of us okay hey just a side note are you not feeling warm i mean you can put on the fan if you want to guys ask and you shall receive <laughs> the bible says you have not because you ask not <laughs> hey, how's everybody online doing? All, all okay? Uh, Samuel, uh, Ravli, Prabhu, Nina. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so what should be the message of the local church? That's where we are at. Is is the gospel of Jesus uh, declaring what he has done? Uh, the message of the cross. Uh, that was pretty much the only message of the first century church. Right? They preached, uh, you know, Christ crucified and that he rose again from the dead. Right? Uh, that was the only message. Like um, now, somewhere along the way, uh, we've kind of seemed to have lost the wonder of it, of that message of the gospel. But um, as again, Paul says, and you know, time and time again, he says, this is the gospel of power. 
you, you we don't need to add anything to it or subtract anything from it right it is powerful enough so he's encouraging us to preach the gospel and that is the purpose um you know of the local church and then he also says that preach the whole counsel uh, of god so uh, it's in your notes in if you're looking at pdf or oh wait in your hard copy where are we page 16 <laughs> at the bottom and it says, as ministers, we are to preach, uh, teach, and proclaim the whole counsel of God. So that means the, the whole counsel simply refers to the sound doctrine. Nickel. <laughs> doctrine, right? So we, as we said some of the reasons can be the doctrine of the church and whatnot. So here's saying, uh, preach the whole counsel of God. Preach and teach the whole counsel of God. So it simply means... Don't just preach grace, 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 grace. Now, if you preach just about grace and miss out, and you don't preach about truth, you're missing out on the whole counsel, right? And if you don't teach about, let's say, if you're only teaching about the truth and you just leave, you don't talk about the holiness of God or you don't talk about any other different aspects of God, uh, how about He's faithful, He's merciful, so many other things, isn't it? So what we are encouraged here to do is to preach and teach the whole counsel of God. Everything about who He is needs to be taught. Don't get caught up in just one thing. Uh, and that's what people need to hear, everything about who He is, isn't it? Um, so, um, I mean, I'll, I'll let you all go through the Bible verses there that is mentioned in your notes. I don't want to go through it. Um, and so what that will do is when you're preaching and teaching the whole counsel of God, that will guard you from every false doctrine. Now, because now let's say you focus on just one topic. Like, you know, it is it's like, like the horse, no? Like you're just fixed on one thing and, and you might leave out everything else, isn't it? Why is that important? Because another attribute on a, or another aspect can validate another aspect, right? Now, the truth can validate what the uh, what the grace of God is. Now, when you're speaking only about grace of God, you might miss out some of the truth that can support this. So it's very important to go back and forth. Um, and so that will protect you from all the other uh, false doctrine, isn't it? Um, so when people understand the truth, they will be able to identify the error and stay away from it. Um, so you all know how people identify fake currencies, right? How do they identify fake currencies? By being in touch with the real. By being in touch with the real, yeah, thanks. So what they do is the person study the authentic note really well. They don't, because there can be n number of fake notes fake currencies, isn't it? Like, there can be so many things. So they study the real, authentic, credible currency really well. And so when they know the truth really well, okay, so this is how it feels, this is how everything should be. When they look at a fake one, they're not wasting time. It's like, yeah, this is fake. Are you with me? So when you understand the whole counsel of God really well, and you let the Holy Spirit teach and reveal the things of God to you really well, you will know it. You will know when a doctrine is false. Yeah? So, um, yeah, that's that. Um, we are to preach and teach the gospel. We are to preach and teach the whole counsel of God. And that will help us uh, identify false doctrines and whatnot. Okay, so we have the mission, we have the message. And then finally, we'll talk about the methods. Okay. <clears throat> so the methods we must be uh, we, we use must be aligned to the standards and the directives set forth in the Word of God. Um, you know, you might be like, okay, hey, Roshan, I thought we're not going to discuss about methods. Uh, you know, we are not. We're simply looking at what the Word of God has to say, okay? Uh, the Word of God says uh, our methods must be pure. In other words, it shouldn't be impure or we shouldn't deceive or manu manipulate God's Word for our own benefit. 
okay we must not use deceit or manipulation to achieve our objectives now the objectives can be anything i want to be all knowing <laughs> or all powerful in the south uh, you know of karnataka i want to be the richest pastor or the my ministry should be famous so i will do whatever i have to do to make it rich and famous you know um i was making taking a class for the final years on worship ministry and i was just telling them how worship ministry is a priesthood and how worship ministry is now become an industry right uh, and so ministry in general you know in a sense it's lost that essence that it's a priesthood guys it's only about serving it's not about fame or gain or to make your name known your name famous it's not about that it, but somewhere along the way we have lost right the blueprint of god has become peripheral for us and the world has become the main focus isn't it the who the k love awards okay i've heard of it yeah but yeah, yeah. essentially right 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 yeah as in we'll learn more about that in worship ministry next year about uh, what do you what do you think about awards and what not we'll not discuss about it now but in general uh, the point here is that our intentions our motives should be pure that's the point here right our methods in methods he doesn't say what methods you should be using but whatever you choose to do that should be pure right is it acceptable unto god that should be the question isn't it the we i mean it's so important all the time for us to get the question right we need to know to, how to ask the right questions okay because um there was a time so i was uh, helping out a ministry called face to face uh, long back and uh, i mean still friends with them but in 2011 we started doing um the leader of the ministry wanted to uh, do like a seven day non stop you know uh, praise worship and word intercession uh, and what not right so seven days when we started doing that uh, one week one seven days i think it has 166 hours i'm not sure 24 times 7 you can calculate and tell me so um we were spreading the word across the city we were inviting people you know it's like hey you know we're going to have this 24/7 uh, prayer word and in, uh, you know and worship and what not come and be join us i think in 2011 not it had not happened a lot so it was i think happening for the first time for 7 days um so the the question these were the questions that are kept coming up uh hey why are you all doing it are you all trying to set a record a world record of some sort uh you know the questions were very different when the question should have actually been this is jesus worthy is jesus worthy of your 7 days of 24 hours worship and intercession is he worthy he is worthy isn't it so that is the question so when you ask when you look at Up from that perspective everything changes it's like yeah he is worthy and that's why we're going to do this not because to make our name famous right not to just to create a record or whatever whatever right and so uh, i think as leaders and everything that we do uh we need to keep our hearts pure and you know uh very transparent make that prayer like the psalmist cries or search me and know me and see if there's any wicked ways in me constantly be before him lord search me and know me the audacity of that prayer is is so profound is saying search me lord and know me i want to do this is it aligning with your will is this what i'm hearing right because we were called to be instruments and what not so our methods ought to be pure and uh, another uh, important point there is not offensive yet without compromise let's go to page 19 at the bottom um guys i'm i'm leaving out a lot of scriptures so that you all can just read by yourselves okay uh not offensive yet without compromise that simply means you have to speak the truth 
and you speak it in love. Okay, you speak the truth, but you speak it in love. Now, let's take an example of LGBTQ or homosexuality, uh, you know, uh, homosexuals. There's, there's only two responses to that community from the world. The response one is they are hated. On the other response is that they are accepted or they are affirmed. They are hated or accepted. Now, as a Christian, I cannot hate them because of the word of God. I cannot hate them because of the word of God. I cannot affirm them also because of the word of God. Yes or no? I cannot hate them because of the word of God. I also cannot affirm them because of the word of God. But that, does that mean, do I compromise or dilute the truth of what the Word of God says? I cannot change the Word of God or add to the Word of God. Uh, it's not my book for me to change anything. Right? If I was the author of the book, I will go back, re-edit it. Okay, version 2.0. <laughs> no? I can't do that to the Word of God. <laughs> Isn't it? Um, just to accommodate a community. I speak the truth. This is what it says. But I do it in love and not hatred. Isn't it? So um, that's the method. It says, don't be offensive. And yet, there, there, there are times when you speak the truth in love and you, and you don't mean to offend someone. People will still get offended. That you cannot help. But what is your intention? Is your intention going up the pulpit just to offend people, again, it comes down to the purity and the intentions of your heart. Isn't it? Right? Everything kind of flows from the abundance of your heart, isn't it? You speak. Um, right? So you don't compromise, yet you speak the truth in love. You demonstrate uh, you know, with spirit and with power. Um, be spirit-led, simply. That's, that's the point of all of this, is be spirit-led. Uh, The methods or the methodology has changed over the years. It will change. right? The worship that happened in the tabernacle of Moses was not the same methods used in the tabernacle of David. right? The methods change, but the principle remain the same. right? The methods of giving 2,000 years ago could be very different from the methods we give. G-pay. Right? But the principle is what? giving. It's the same. It doesn't change. And so we are constantly inclined to the Holy Spirit, to His leading, to His guiding, what He has to say, what He has to teach, what He has to, what He wants to do in and through us. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's basically, uh, you know, chapter two, guys, is, is that we remain sensitive to, to the voice of God, to the leading of His uh, to the leading of his voice, that we remain a sheep, uh, a flock that knows the master and, and hears the master's voice and knows his voice. Are you with me? Right? So know the master's voice and hear his voice. Um, and when one of the things what people, uh, I'm, I'm concluding with this. Um, so one of the things that God wanted to instill into the people of Israel when he was bringing them out of the land of Egypt is that they were for 400 years that they were in Egypt. 400 years is equivalent to 10 generations. For 10 generations, they are used to seeing the gods of Egypt. They are used to seeing, and the land where they come from called Goshen, okay, land of Goshen, you read in Exodus, isn't it? It's a plain. That means you could see for 10 kilometers of what is ahead, who is coming, who is going. They could see. So they were used to being a people of what they saw, the tangible, the natural. But when they came out of Egypt, now they are suddenly in the wilderness. There are these mountains and hills. They, don't, they can't see around 10 meters and they panic. They cannot see. They don't know where exactly they are going. And so what God wanted to teach them was to become the people who will hear his voice and follow his voice. That he is the shepherd. Now you read the scriptures time and time again in Deuteronomy. It says that he led them like a shepherd in the wilderness. 
and the sheep will only follow by the leading of the shepherd's voice. And so we as a church, uh, in John 10.10, 10, uh, I mean, John not 10.10, 10, but in John chapter 10, he says, he is the good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. And time and time again, the scripture says, he's the great shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. And so as a local church, um, we ought to live life or live according to what we hear, what he has to say continuously. Okay? Um, so that's chapter one and chapter two. Uh, thank you all for joining. We'll conclude uh, today's session, and I'll, I'll see you all again next week. Okay? Thanks for joining, everybody. God bless you. See you.